everyone. Thank you so much for joining and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, for those that uh, have not attended a webinar before, I will remind you that uh, for the duration of this webinar, your phone, uh, sorry, your, uh, you will be on mute and that uh, I won't be able to hear you, but should you have questions, you will be able to type those questions in. Um, at the bottom of your little control panel there. And should time allow, I will be uh, trying to answer those questions for you at the end of the presentation. And I expect this presentation to run roughly 20, 25 minutes uh, and maybe five minutes for questions at the end. Um, in the chance or, uh, that I can't get to your questions, I will certainly respond to them um, shortly thereafter via email. And um, with that, I guess we'll jump right in. So again, thank you so much for joining. I see there's a few more people still trickling in, but uh, for the sake of time, we are going to get going. And uh, today's webinar is about is our Narwhal and Polar Bear Safari, which is brand new for 2019. And we're very excited to have this discussion with you today and super excited to be able to showcase for you this brand new Flow Edge Safari experience. So let's get started. Uh, and before we jump into exactly what does all of that mean. We'll talk a little bit more about what actually we are going to talk about um, in its entirety today. So our presentation today, uh, we'll talk a little bit about Arctic Kingdom and why would uh, why we should travel with Arctic Kingdom. Uh, where, does that, where is it that we are going? What can one expect on this uh, Flow Edge Safari? What are the accommodations like at our base edge, our Flow Edge? Uh, base camp, and who is the Arctic Kingdom team? So Arctic Kingdom is the leader in land-based Arctic travel, and we've been creating amazing epic safari experiences and getaways in the Arctic for the better part of 20 years. We are the pioneers of the Arctic safari, um, and like unlike any other tour operators that operate in the Arctic, we are in the Arctic virtually year round. We are in the Arctic all year round, but we offer tours virtually year round. Our season begins on an annual basis in March. Uh, we conclude our trips uh, generally in around the end of November. And there's an the entire breadth of inventory. Uh, it's certainly something for everyone um, within our repertoire. So I'd mentioned, as I've mentioned, for the better part of 20 years, we've been working in the Arctic, crafting amazing experiences. And without a doubt, we have unmatched access to, to the locations in which we travel. So we like to say that we make the inaccessible accessible. And we, uh, we have unparalleled expertise in the wildlife and the habitat in which for that we, uh, we run our trips. Um, there is no other tour operator in the world that operates in the, the, in the diversity of areas in which we offer uh, experiences. So well, whether that's eastern Greenland or southwestern Hudson Bay, um, uh, or sorry, yeah, so Baffin Island, southwestern Hudson Bay, or even into Greenland, uh, there, is, uh, there is absolutely something there for everyone. Um, and we'd like to pride ourselves uh, in the staff. Um, so whether it's the, the, local not, the local guide or the naturalist or the dive professional, um, the, 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 the different individuals who compose our teams are, are second to none. Um, last, certainly, but not least here, uh, I want to let you know that um, everything that we do uh, that you see here um, can be complemented by a, a private itinerary or bespoke experience as well. So um, we, we absolutely have um, sort of the sky's the limit in regards to the number of opportunities or experiences that one can, can have in the Arctic, um, and we'd be happy to have those conversations with you as well. Uh, but today, we'll be talking a little bit specifically about our brand new 2019 Narwhal and Polar Bear Safari. This experience has a, a new itinerary for 2019. Um, for, those that, uh, for those of you who are familiar um, with uh, this safari in, its, uh, in the version that I guess we've been running for several years, um, we've decided to, to really um, to change things up and uh, we'll explore a little bit more, more about what that means in just a moment or two. Uh, but in its essence, we're looking at a brand new exclusive location in the high Arctic. Um, this is a fly-in experience. Um, 
meaning that we will be leveraging a, a chartered aircraft to uh, privately chartered aircraft to bring our clients into the camp. And this camp, different from the way that uh, the current Flow Edge camps are set up uh, at this time of year, will actually be on an Arctic beach. So we will not be out on the sea ice. And we'll speak about that uh, a little bit more in just a moment or two. So in its essence, the Narwhal and Polar Bear Safari is, uh, is an amazing opportunity uh, and experience to be able to see the iconic um, landscape, icecape, and wildlife of the Arctic almost in one area. And uh, we say that because it's we are sort of at the confluence of, of the migration of the narwhal, beluga, uh, polar bears out on the pack ice, the migratory seabirds that are uh, coming into the area from the from the south, and it's it's in this flow edge area where we just have uh, amazing wildlife encounters, um, as well as um, phenomenal opportunities to uh, to add on or customize that experience. Um, and to experience some, some great food. We, we truly pride ourselves uh, with our culinary team and all of our camps as well. So a little bit about, I guess, the fine print. Um, this, this safari is a seven day, six night experience. And as I mentioned, it is, a, it is a charter flight to camp. That's from the community of Pond Inlet. And we'll talk a little bit more about that just in a second. I'll show you a map so we can uh, sort of place ourselves and, and really truly get a sense of where it is that we're going. Um, uh, the, the groups are uh, of 16, and the camp capacity is of th is 32 persons. So, um, what that means is within the camp dynamics, we'll have small group tours and activities from the base camp. So, the small group experience is still going to exist um, in the safari, and um, we pride ourselves again in being able to get out to the right place at the right time, keeping the group small. Uh, allowing us to be nimble and fluid in our itinerary and to travel where the animals may be. Um, so this is this is still something that we uh, we're very proud to be able to offer, and we we look very much for, very much look forward to doing it in 2019 as well in this new location. In the space camp safari, just like we've always uh, just like we always employ, we uh, we have trip leaders and local guides. Uh, it is the local guides who are critical to the success of this uh, of this program. Um, they are the ones that uh, that know the wildlife, that uh, truly understand ice conditions, um, and uh, at the end of the day, um, their special knowledge of the land, of the ice, and, and of the sea um, in the high Arctic is, is really what makes this experience uh, extremely special. Um, obviously, this is uh, all meals included. Uh, it's an all-inclusive camp. Um, in uh, in its new location, and there's no single supplement unless one requests. Um, we assume uh, shared uh, occupancy in our uh, in our yurts, um, which have shared washrooms, uh, and deluxe upgrades into the yurts uh, for the yurts, I should say, are available. And what that means is uh, an ensuite uh, private uh, washroom bathroom uh, in, in a select number of yurts. So where is it that we're going? Well. Navy Board Inlet is our brand new 2019 location, and Navy Board Inlet is nestled in top of Baffin Island and proximate to Sermon Lake National Park uh, and Bylot Island, as you can see on the map. And I have another map I'll show you just in a second, which may make it a little bit more clear. Um, but at the end of the day, getting here is very easy, and I think that's what I want to stress with you. Um, it, a lot of people think it may be daunting or a little difficult to travel to these areas, and really it isn't. Um, the flight path on this map that you see originates in Ottawa, and it's flying from Ottawa to Iqaluit. Uh, and from Iqaluit, uh, we transfer planes. So we've, we've transitioned from a Boeing 737 to an ATR-42, uh, 300 or 4, 500 series, which is a, a large twin uh, prop aircraft, twin turboprop aircraft, uh, walk-through cabin, um, and flight attendant, um, so it's very comfortable travel. And once in Pond Inlet, we will then uh, take a private charter flight directly into the camp, and that's about another 50 to 60 minutes from Pond Inlet. This special location is, is in the heart of Canada's uh, newest and largest protected area. So Talurti up in Manga, is how this is pronounced, is a, is a new um, a protected area uh, in and around Lancaster Sound. So if you're uh, doing your little bit of homework, you will 
um, maybe recognize Lancaster Sound, but Talutsi Apimanga is the Inuktitut name um, for this uh, protected area uh, in this part of the world. This is the most northern destination visited on any of our Arctic safaris, um, so it is absolutely a true high uh, Arctic experience. We are well above the Arctic Circle on this on this camp, uh, and Lancaster Sound is very special, uh, similar to to Admiralty Inlet uh, and the Pond Inlet Flow Edge. Um, this area is renowned uh, to be one of the most prolific wildlife areas uh, in the Arctic and, frankly, in the world, just through its diversity and sheer numbers of animals. So why is Lancaster Sound, um, why is it so special? The Lancaster Sound uh, area uh, is, is very diverse for uh, several different reasons. Um, but there's some interesting facts here to, to, to read that 75% of the world's narwhal rely on Lancaster Sound for life. So these are animals that are um, spending the winter um, in, in, a, in a local polenia and then migrating into uh, this area at this time of the year. Uh, at this, it's also uh, estimated that there are over 6,000 and roughly 6,500 bowhead whales that swim through in and around this uh, area. Um, throughout the year, and at this time of year, what's happening is the ice is receding uh, in Lancaster Sound uh, and generally opening up in the Arctic. The whales, all whale species, whether it's narwhal, beluga, or bowhead, are beginning their migration through the archipelago of islands. This interesting graphic here just shows us, uh, again, sort of speaks to the diversity uh, of the wildlife in the area, uh, with algae and phytoplankton being sort of the basis of the food chain, uh, and then obviously the predators uh, looking at those animals um, for their sources of protein. So whether that's the, the seal or the polar bear or the narwhal or the bowhead whale or even the walrus, um, as this area opens up, more sunlight permeates the water, creating small algal blooms, leading to phytoplankton um, blooms, and in turn drawing the wildlife that we are there to see. So one thing Arctic Kingdom does, uh, definitely more so than any other tour operator in the world, is specialize itself in, in polar bear encounters and polar bear type experiences. Um, this area at Lancaster Sound is very special because it is the second most dense polar bear population in the world. Uh, and we, uh, we will be having some pretty amazing polar bear encounters, uh, without a doubt, uh, in maybe Board Inlet. Um, there are over 30 species of migratory birds for the birders uh, on the call. Uh, and this is just a handful of the different species that we will uh, we will see quite uh, quite regularly actually on our trip. So whether it's a, a thick-billed mer or an ivory gull or a long-tailed jager, uh, kittiwakes, uh, we will see snow geese and and countless other countless other species uh, at, at any given time at any given day at the flow edge. Uh, the Navy Board Flow Edge is is an area that we freak, we have frequented as a company quite a few times, and we've we've brought some. Uh, we've brought some film crews into this area over the years uh, and some special clients. Um, so we know how, how unique and uh, how intrinsically beautiful this area, of the, uh, this area of the world is. And we're super excited to be able to offer this exclusive destination uh, to your Arctic Kingdom client. So just a little bit more about the details. The, the fly-in experience in and of itself is going to be an amazing part of the journey. So from Pond Inlet, we'll be flying an approximate 60-minute flight directly into the camp. Um, and along the way, we'll absolutely be having and enjoying aerial views of, uh, of landscapes that are, uh, that are stunning. Um, there will be icebergs that are um, frozen in over the winter. So without a doubt, we'll have an opportunity to um, to be able to get some great images, uh, and it's quite possible to see wildlife along the way as, way, as well. So we're, we're really excited about this unique element uh, that we've added to the overall experience that certainly is going to uh, heighten the sense of adventure uh, for those who are lucky enough to join us. So what is it to be on an Arctic Kingdom safari, and specifically the narwhal and polar bear safari? Well, from the base camp, we're, we're doing exploring uh, by snowmobile and Kamotik. And a Kamotik is a, is, a, is a sled, and you can see this in the, in the picture here. It's a traditional Inuit sled that's held together by a rope. And on that sled, we have some comfortable seats um, and a box, a caboose, which is called the Neglutuk, that's protect us from the elements. We can stow our gear in um, and, 
and we'll travel safely and comfortably over the ice to our vantage points um, to to view the narwhal and the and the and the, and the bears and the beluga and the seals and such. It's really effectively um, in the African safari nomenclature. We are talking about our game drive via snowmobile. Uh, these snowmobiles will be guided by local Arctic Kingdom trip leaders and by local Inuit. Um, and without a doubt, the chances to photograph, to photograph, and to film you know, pods of whales, um, polar bears, the occasional bowhead and walrus will present themselves. And really, that's why we're there. We are absolutely at the right place at the right time, and we're we're super excited to be to be able to offer this uh, experience by a snowmobile um, to our clients at this time of the year. The, again, as I mentioned, the aerial tour into into Navy Board Inlet will um, uh, inevitably give us the ability to see the glaciers of Violet Island and Sermilek National Park. Um, and while in camp, um, there's many different activities that one can participate in. So whether it's an interpretive hike uh, to the, the daily or nightly, I should say, I guess, naturalist presentations, which will be um, taking place, or whether it's going out for a, a kayak or even possibly a snorkel at the flow edge, those activities are, are will be part and parcel with how, with our daily offerings, and um, will in, certainly enrich the end users' experience and our clients' experience. Such that um, when you, you leave this camp, you'll have a better sense and appreciation of life in the north, of the iconic landscapes, the iconic wildlife, and uh, and certainly have gotten hopefully a little bit of exercise at the same time. I mentioned earlier that Arctic Kingdom prides itself on its uh, culinary abilities in these very remote locations. Uh, and without a doubt, uh, we won't be taking any um, back to order and, or, or side steps to the, how we present uh, and create amazing culinary uh, experiences at the flow edge. So whether it's a hot lunch that's served on the land with gourmet tomato soup and some beautiful warm grilled cheese sandwiches, or maybe it's that uh, Arctic char or turbot or a caribou roast for, for, for dinner. Um, that's what we really pride ourselves in. And then of course, um, for the vegetarians that are there, we will always have that option. Um, and for any uh, client that has a specific dietary uh, wish or desire or need, um, as long as that's communicated in, in advance, uh, inevitably we will be able to accommodate uh, any dietary uh, need or wish. The, the yurts, as I mentioned, it's sort of in this second point here is, uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, we're going to be we're going to be good and tired. And so what's better the way to end the day than just a beautiful meal uh, and then sitting back to your heated yurt at the end of the day to take the chill off, to plug in your, um, your batteries, uh, maybe take a hot shower uh, and prepare ourselves for the next day. So it's uh, it's going always going to be a full and exciting day in the camp. So what are, the, what are the conditions like? Well, they're they're really not all that bad. Um, we have 24 hours of daylight uh, at in Navy Board Inlet at this time of year, and the temperature range from May to June will be anywhere from 9 degrees Fahrenheit up to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, but what what I what I always like to tell people is you even though it may seem a little cool at 50 degrees, what is a little surprising for many is how intense that sun really is. Um, I like to uh, draw the parallel to spring skiing conditions. So without a doubt, um, people on this trip are, are, are slathering themselves in sunscreen, uh, generally peeling off the layers during the day, maybe putting on a, uh, their jacket at, at night or while traveling back and forth between camp. Uh, but these temperatures, may, though they may seem a little chilly, are absolutely very comfortable um, for, for anyone that travels with us. So our local Inuit guides are, as I mentioned, are a critical part of our team. Um, and we'd like to, I guess, not certainly miss the fact that, yes, we are here to see wildlife, um, first and foremost, potentially for many people, but a big part of what our, a big part of our trip and a big part of what makes our King Kings and special is our relationship with our Inuit guides uh, and with the communities in which we work. So we can't effectively do what we do without their knowledge, uh, without um, their deep knowledge, I should say, and expertise on the land. Um, and we like to certainly have our clients engage with our guides. Uh, our guides will be uh, presenting their local knowledge about life on the land. And at the end of the day, our clients are going to walk away with a brand new appreciation uh, for an indigenous culture that is 
um, that has persevered in the Arctic for thousands of years. So let's jump into the accommodations a little bit. This is our premium safari camp on land. And the camp, as I mentioned, will accommodate up to 32 guests. Um, we have our premium yurts that are available. Um, and a subset of those yurts will be deluxe yurts that will have ensuite washrooms. And we have a one family tent, which, is, which will allow for quad occupancy. So generally, all the yurts are double occupancy. Um, but this one quad family tent is something that's available uh, in each uh, departure as well. In the base camp, we'll have a separate dining room, dining tent, I should say, I guess, uh, and then a lounge, t a lounge tent. And uh, the lounge tent will also double as our presentation tent. So uh, on a daily basis, our expedition leaders, our naturalist hosts, will be providing uh, lectures and presentations about uh, topics specific to the Arctic. So whether it be culture, whether it be wildlife, whether it be a Franklin expedition expert, um, we're going to have something for everyone on a rotational basis um, throughout the um, throughout the life of our camp. Uh, just a little uh, quick sound bite, I guess, on the washrooms. Uh, as I mentioned, the uh, the deluxe uh, yurts will have ensuite, um, but the camp will have shared washrooms with hot and cold running water, sinks and showers, um, and full size uh, eco toilets um, as well. For those that uh, are curious about that little bit. So the next few slides, slides um, will just conjure up a little bit more uh, imagery for you as we walk through um, what is a flow edge, what would one expect to see, um, what could one take uh, picture-wise with their cell phone or their uh, DSLR. Well, I, I always like to tell people that there's, you can't just take a bad picture in the Arctic. Everywhere you turn, there's something you, to, to focus on. Um, and inevitably, uh, pictures like these icebergs, uh, you know, a, a polar bear out on out on the pack ice is just um, it, these are the types of experience that we're trying to get um, for our clients, and we do everything uh, you know possible to get them the up close, personal, intimate encounters that Arctic Kingdom has has become the world leader in. Um, Paws of Narwhal uh, will inevitably be um, at our foot. Uh, footsteps or, or at our doorstep, I guess I should say, um, somewhere along the way. So it's these types of encounters where narwhal are feeding uh, or passing through the area or exhibiting the behavior called logging that we're really after, which lends itself to amazing imagery, so whether it's the, the tusk that we're after or the flukes that they do a deep dive. Um, we're going to have some great shots. The migratory bird species in this area are extremely numerous. Uh, they are plentiful, they are colorful, they are vibrant. And for the birder uh, in your family or the birder in your client list, this is this is a destination second to none, without a doubt. Um, images like this King Eider, um, the two king, male King Eider drakes um, will be commonplace. Again, some more shots of the narwhal um, exhibiting some tusky behavior. Uh, we have some juveniles here. It looks like an older male on the right-hand side as well. but. It, Again, it's this type of experience we're really, truly hoping to bring to our clients. The flow edge is a place, for me personally, a place of serenity. It's a place of reflection. Um, it's a place of um, extreme quiet, extreme silence. And, and that's what really makes the, the flow edge special on top of the wildlife and the Inuit culture and the food and everything else. It's a place where one can truly disconnect um, and reflect. And I think that's what makes this area very, very special. Of course, we can always be a little goofy, a little silly, pose for that uh, that fantastic Instagram shot of a lifetime. Uh, but you know, it always comes back down to that real intimate encounter with wildlife. And as I said, animals on our doorstep. Well, this is the type of uh, experience that we we aim to give and provide to our clients. So another shot of the flow edge, just to give you sort of a parallel. And um, you know, there's again sort of a, a serene moment where we're waiting for the wildlife. Um, to or we've just witnessed an amazing wildlife encounter. So we can collect our thoughts, maybe put an hydrophone into the water to, to listen to the whales or the seals as they're swimming by, um, have a chat with a naturalist or one of our guides who can explain a little bit more about the flora and fauna that makes uh, the Arctic a very special place. The small group experience is one that Arctic Kingdom has prided itself on delivering in delivery for, for many different years, for many years. Uh, and uh, by by no means is, is a 32 camp, 32 person 
the camp going to stop us from providing that level of service. Um, so our, our plan certainly is to uh, is to work within the group dynamics to plan various different game drives to various different areas, uh, and at the same time deliver a level of service that's private, intimate, and very fluid. So the itineraries will often be dictated by the group dynamics and group decisions uh, with other things to, to consider. But at the end of the day, it is this small group, close camaraderie feeling that we'll, we'll be able to uh, continue to provide in 2019 and beyond. These small groups are going to have amazing encounters with icebergs and wildlife similar to, to what you see here. And um, you know, it, it, this is the type of experience that really truly makes traveling into the Arctic uh, uh, once in a lifetime experience. So a little bit about our team. So who is, who is going to be on our narwhal and polar bear safari? Well, we have our Arctic Kingdom expedition leader. Uh, we'll have Arctic Kingdom Inuit guides, uh, and then our executive chef and, and his or her assistants, effectively the culinary team. Uh, without a doubt, those are, you know, sort of, those are the key critical um, players um, on our safari. Um, but we'll also be having um, the camp manager and camp assistants to round out the team. And we'll have other specialists, such as biologists, glaciologists, photo tour leaders. Uh, these, uh, these folks will be part of the trip staff or lecture series team. Um, and uh, stay tuned for future updates and more information on that in the coming weeks. Our sales and operations team are, are, are the back office support and they're you know, the backbone of, of making this trip successful. Uh, the sales team is going to be available to you for any question you may have. That's Monday to Friday, 9 to 5 Eastern time. Uh, our trip logistics team, which is our operations side, uh, we have a client services coordinator who's responsible for the delivery of uh, the flight information, recent materials, all the hotel information, and any post-sales client care. Uh, and again, available 9 to 5, uh, Monday to Friday. We're here and we're happy to help with any questions you may have. Booking a trip with Arctic Kingdom is very easy. Certainly speaking to your travel advisor is uh, one of the most easiest ways to um, to get yourself on one of our amazing safari experiences. Uh, but certainly contacting our sales team directly uh, is another alternative way to doing that. And that contact information is here. It can also be found at our website, um, www.arctickingdom.com. So thank you so much for your time. I'm going to have a quick look to see if there are any questions. So um, if you do have a question or two, you can absolutely type them in. And uh, as we're almost about 30 minutes, I, I think I have time for a few questions to see if, uh, see if I can get to them um, before our time is up. So bear with me one second here as I work through the technology. So there's a question about the hot air balloon, and is that something that will be available on the trip? Uh, absolutely. So the, the balloon, the hot air balloon that was shown on this uh, in this presentation was is um, is an add-on to this trip. The hot air balloon will be in the camp, um, but it needs to be booked in advance um, and done on a uh, on a bespoke basis. So you can contact the Arctic Kingdom sales team um, to inquire upon rates um, and the availability of that balloon. Uh, do we allow kids on our tours? Yeah, absolutely. So we have kids on our tours, um, and uh, the minimum age for a, an accompanied uh, minor is 12 years old, and that's for one of our scheduled safaris. Um, and if it's a private bespoke experience, we can absolutely do a younger age. Um, but we would want to talk through that experience with you, just so that uh, we we um, we make everyone aware, certainly the parents and or the travel advisor, that uh, you know of what what's entailed in this trip. Um, is wine or beer available? So uh, this camp, this camp um, is a dry camp uh, in that there will not be wine or beer served um, due to some of the restrictive uh, policies of uh, alcohol in the north. Um, so it is a dry camp. Uh, there's a question about um, the wheelchair accessibility or terrain of the camp. Um, it is true that, that the camps are not wheelchair accessible, uh, but should someone have a physical limitation, uh, we would welcome that conversation um, with you as the client or as the travel advisor uh, to understand the nature of that limitation to see if it can be accommodated. Um, the terrain is generally relatively flat, um, 
And so if there's a, a limited mobility issue, uh, we may not have a problem. And, um, and that's something we would just have to work through uh, with you as an individual to, to truly understand uh, the nature of the issue. Uh, there's a question about uh, cost and, and agent rates. Um, that information is available on our website. I would encourage you to take a visit uh, to the website in order to get uh, that answer. And certainly give us a call um, should you require more information. Um, so the, there's a question about uh, the flow edge. How far away is it? That how far, how far away are we from the flow edge, and how long will we spend there every day? Um, the flow edge is is a dynamic environment, and so we don't expect it to be any more than 30 to 45 minutes away in general from the camp. Um, but of course, that could range depending on sea ice conditions and all sorts of other different things. Um, but at the end of the day, we uh, or I guess you know from a day day. Um, or time spent, I should say, per day um, at the flow edge, we expect to spend anywhere from eight to 10 uh, hours at the flow edge. And so generally it's a, a nice big hot hearty breakfast early in the morning and, and we travel to the flow edge. Um, and as I mentioned, we, we are going to be creating subgroups within our camp. Um, and so there will be absolutely opportunities to, to travel out uh, for longer durations uh, as part of those subgroups. And there's more information on that to follow. Um, there's a concern about, um, or a question, I should say, about um, polar clothing. Uh, so Arctic Kingdom has a polar clothing, Arctic uh, clothing rental package. It's a complete head-to-toe package that's available for rent. Um, so you can absolutely very quickly um, know that, or very confidently, sorry, know that you have the right gear, including the footwear for this program. Um, that safety concern about bear protection. So. Um, we, we know uh, we know where uh, where the ice is safe, where the ice isn't safe. Uh, our guides are trained with uh, on polar bear deterrence, and we have measures in camp to, uh, to protect the base camp from uh, from polar bears. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, it's uh, it's something that we've been doing for 20 years, um, and we uh, we've got lots of little sort of tricks and tips uh, to keep uh, everybody safe and still have an amazing safe encounter. Uh, the question about charging batteries, absolutely every single yurt has electricity and will be heated. So um, at the end of the day, one can charge all their batteries to their heart's content uh, and power is supplied by, a, uh, by generators in this remote location. Um, a few more questions here to get through. Questions about uh, polar bear encounters and, and encounters with whales on snorkel. Um, you know, we, we our goal is to have wildlife encounters, and at the end of the day, we are uh, beholden to Mother Nature for the for the numbers of bears. Um, but you know, we expect to see anywhere from you know one to four bears uh, a day, uh, and narwhal can be literally in the hundreds in one day, quite possibly. Um, encountering narwhal on snorkel is something that uh, I have personally have done. We've had many of our clients do, so it's absolutely within the realm of possibility. Um, we always adhere to the Nunavut uh, wildlife viewing uh, uh, regulations uh, and uh, encounter wild, uh, wildlife at a safe distance. Um, excuse me, and that does include encountering whales uh, in the water on snorkel as well. Uh, so there's a few questions there about uh, cameras and, and lens recommendations and such like that. Um, so that information can be found within our briefing guides. It certainly is available to you uh, through a sales team as well. Uh, but very quickly, anywhere from a 200 millimeter to a 400 millimeter or even higher lens uh, would be certainly within the realm of uh, reasonable. Um, I personally use a 300 millimeter lens and been able to have great shots. Um, for that professional or semi-professional photographer, they may choose to go with a 400 with a teleconverter, a wide-angle zoom, or maybe even a six or 800. We've seen it all. So um, we've got lots of information on to sort of complement that answer and to expand upon it um, should you wish to, to do so. Um, but that's it. Looks like uh, that's it for the questions. I apologize if I went through them really quick, but I'm just looking at the time and trying to be sensitive to everyone's time. Um, we are here to answer your questions, so please, by all means, reach out to us with an email, give us a phone call, and, and we'll happily talk through this with you a little bit further. Uh, visit our website and take a look at the Narwhal Polar Bear Safari trip there. Download the trip information, um, which will uh, provide you again and much more color um, than I've provided in this quick 30-minute uh, webinar. So uh, without further ado, thank you so much for joining us, um, and uh, we look forward to 
hosting you in the north on this amazing experience. Take care and bye-bye.